All righty. Good evening and welcome to the High Speed Internet Subcommittee meeting for October 9th, Wednesday, 2024. Time is 6.04 p.m. We're here in the land use room at Town Hall at 454 College Highway. This meeting is being recorded. If anyone's recording the meeting, that's great. Just make it known to the chair or anyone else in the meeting for that matter. And it's also being held in hybrid fashion and we do have members in person and on Zoom this evening. So why don't we do a bit of a around the room roll call and then over on, on uh, Zoom as well. So uh, Doug Moglin, present. Marlene Quinlan, present. Jim Johnson, present. Jim Crowley, present. Chris Boyd, present. And on Zoom? Ian Cresswell, Tom present. present. I, knew that. I knew that was going to happen. That's all right. Bob Boyd, present. Tom Kolick, present. Ryan Pease, present. Okay. And I do believe we certainly have an overwhelming quorum this evening, so we have no concern there. So that's excellent. People were split personalities, voice. Yes, for this for for the purpose of this meeting, yes. So first, we'll take any public comment. Uh, is there any any public comment either in the room, which is uh, completely empty, or on Zoom? I uh, just go ahead and speak and we can address it now. If not, we'll continue with our agenda. Hearing none, we shall continue. Okay. Um, when we last met officially, um, our last meeting, we did not, we had a quorum, but we didn't have enough members uh, present, I felt, um, and was the feeling of the people that were here that we should carry forth our agenda from the previous meeting to this week uh, in order to have a, a greater participation from the entire board. Um, so we elected to carry the agenda to tonight and we duly posted and everything for this meeting. So the key discussion point tonight is really about um, finances and um, you know, the monetary aspect of this, and we want to continue the discussion. And it would be my hope that we would be making a recommendation to the planning board, planning board, to the board, is, <laughs> too many years on that board, to the select board, um, whether, um, you know, if if we are to proceed and and how that would look, or if we've decided that we're gonna the the numbers don't work in our favor and we're gonna we're gonna take our ball and go home, um, or if we're gonna decide to proceed, then we've got to go back to the um, we need to go back to the select board and ask them. Um, in my opinion, we need to go back and ask them to kind of reformulate this board again or to establish some sort of governance over. Yes, because um, up till now, it's been kind of uh, start and stop, right? There's a kind of a, a been a demarcation of, of responsibility and authority, right? We've, we've, this board has no statutory authority whatsoever, right? It's just mm -hmm. been an ad hoc advisory okay. um, subcommittee to the select board for the sole purpose. Originally, it was to investigate this. Then we brought it forward. Select board set to proceed. And we've done our, you know, they reconstituted this, this subcommittee to bring forth to where we are right now. So we're kind of at the penultimate steps for this process. But if we elect to proceed, well, then we need to figure, you know, there's got to be some governance around the municipal um, entity that's going to oversee this endeavor, you know, from the design, you know, yeah. working with the designer or working with the installer and construction and then, you know, ongoing and so on and so forth. But before I put the uh, cart way in front of the horse, you know, there. We did have a presentation from Whip City. So it was a month or so ago now, seven or eight weeks now. Um, and frankly, the revenue projection, there was some some question around the, um, you know, what people think a take rate might look like. And based on what we were going to propose to bill strictly for residential, you know, I know, and I know Bob, I'm gonna come right back to you in a moment, because Bob 
and others have spent a lot more time on some of the financial <clears throat> modeling to try to, you know, to justify where we are. The Whip City numbers came back, and I don't have them right in front of me, but the Whip City numbers were, you know, you were teetering and tottering right around zero, um, depending on the take rate, depending on the, you know, the the amount we're going to charge, and so on and so forth. So, but it, you know, we've we've gone down a bit of a path. Um, as far as some of the make ready work, poll applications and so on and so forth. But once we take, if we elect to take the next step, we're all in, right? I've, I've talked about this a couple yeah. of times, but just to be clear for everyone else and anyone else who's watching the recording. And, um, and I don't know if I made the point in, in the meeting last or the, or, or we were just kind of, uh, kibitzing because we didn't have a quorum was, you know, there's been a lot of talk in town, um, probably more at the government level than uh, out in the general population, but it, mm -hmm. with sewers. And I promise to tie this all together is, you know, one of the problems we have with with uh, sewers in the town of South is we have 800 users on a system that was built for way more than 800 users. We've got a ton of capacity. The costs are escalating to maintain that sewer infrastructure and to take that sewer, you know, to maintain that capacity. Um, but they don't have enough users and they have no prospect to add more users. The cost to add users is, it even makes this project look tiny. Um, so, but the analogy that I wanted to draw was if once we step off, if we decide to step off the ledge on the next thing, we're all in, right? We can't build one fiber hood and then decide to get cold feet and stop because exactly. we will have built, we will have paid for the design for the whole town we would have started to build out the whole town and then you can't saddle a fiber hood with the entire cost of all that infrastructure and the back end that's being designed to support the entire town. So that being said, once I so once we step off that ledge, we got to go. And so that's why we've been very, very deliberate, very, very cautious and very, you know, having a lot of, you know, whether it's devil's advocate or taking a look at all the numbers and, and trying to look at a worst case, best case, and say, okay, this if everything goes great, this is you know easy peasy. If everything doesn't go exactly according to plan, which does it ever, you know, this is where we end up. And or if things go you know worse than we you know we thought, this is where we end up. And so, but we have to. I think we owe it to the the taxpayers and everyone else to to do you know make sure we've done our due diligence, and then to make sure that we're confident that once we do take that you know we go beyond where we are right now and start committing resources um to the project that we're going to go and and because we just can't stop if you stop you're going to it's it'll be self-fulfilling that mm -hmm. it will you'll, you'll be in big trouble but uh, i think that's just you know that's my opinion on that for now and so why don't we um bob bob are you with us at this point or are you still yes i'm i'm here okay did you want me to bring up any of the stuff that you shared on the screen or anything like that or you yeah, sure. The the best numbers? one to bring up is uh, the last one I sent out, the version for uh, financial uh, or the, the debt retirement chart. That's probably the best place to start. Okay. Yeah, so while you're bringing that up, um, I can kind of describe what it has. Uh, I ran a few bun a bunch of different analysis with some different prices and some different take rates. To try and get an idea of what the maximum debt would need to be, um, loan-wise, and then the projection of when that retirement, when that debt would be retired. Um, so based on that, you can kind of get an idea of um, if the select board is willing to, you know, go that much into debt with the possibility that things could go south before it's paid off, um, or you know, technology changes and, and maybe before we even pay it off, um, we're we're stuck with it. I'm just waiting for my computer to bring that thing up here. And I apologize. I'm muting myself in between uh, your chairs here. So, no oh, worries. All right, let me see if I can't pull this off. 
I have. Well, that's loading. Do you want to go over the minutes real quick? Get those approved. Uh, we sure can. Thank you. Julie, what do we have for minutes to approve? Do you remember? Do you recall? Eight fifteen minutes. I did do the collection for the last thing you gave me. Yeah. Because you took you actually looked at them last time. And we did we approve them as amended, or we just said we were going to table them because of the corrections? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Has everyone looked at the minutes from August 15th? Yes. 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 Okay. Would someone like to make a motion to approve the minutes of August 15th? I motion that we approve the minutes of August 15th. Okay. Second. Motion made and seconded. We need to take a roll call vote. Doug Moglin, yes. Um, Quinlan, yes. Yes. Jim Crowley, yes. Chris Boyd, yes. And <clears throat> online, Ryan Peace. Uh, Ryan Pease, yes. Ian Creswell. Ian Creswell, yes. Tom Kolick. Tom Kolick, yes. Bob Boyd. Bob Boyd, yes. Okay. So while we were doing that, I was able to get that to come up on the screen here. So I think, yes. Lord, my computer's slow. Man. Okay, Bob, it's on the screen for you, sir. All right, so I ran the 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 fifty percent um, take rate at the eighty five dollars, figuring um, that. Restaurant All right, uh, yeah, I ran it to fifty percent, sixty percent, seven percent, seventy percent, eighty five dollars. I ran the fifty and sixty, and then figure if we drop to seventy five, we'd probably get at least the sixty percent. Um, so just to you can see the, the different different numbers there. Um, Best case, I, I, I trying to play it conservative. I didn't want to run a 70% take rate at the $85 um, just because of the comparison of what Comcast offers at $85. Um, or they just have so many different plans below $85 that I can see a significant amount of people not wanting to do that. Um, so Whip City, their numbers were based on basically the $75. Um, and in, in Westfield, it's even 65. So just just playing conservative there. Um, I did throw in here, um, if you scroll over col column I and over, um, the possibility, uh, and we'd have to see if Whip City can do this, of having a second tier service of 10 gig. And, you know, if we could offer that at $100 or $115 without major increases in infrastructure cost or monthly monthly management fees from Web City, I think that would give us a huge leg up on Comcast and even something that they can't even do with their current infrastructure. Um, if you look at the competitive rates from Comcast, you can get 10 gig service from them, at least at my address, but I'm pretty sure that's, you know, they would have to lay the fiber to do that. Um, $300 a month, $500 service fee, and a three-year commitment with a $300 cancellation fee. So, based on all this that you guys see, um, are there any particular questions? Um, the the ten gig services. How'd you come up with that, Bob? Do so you just plan what if if we were able to offer a higher yeah. tier service? Okay. Yeah, I know. I know that Whip City said that um, the infrastructure was designed to support up to forty gig. Um, so, in theory, we'd be able to offer ten. Um, yeah, yeah, we could. I, I mean, know. it would be. It, I mean, I don't know what we'd get for takers. I mean, even at a gig, most people are surprised to learn that they don't use anything even remotely close to a gig on a consistent oh, base. Oh, it's I all know. really marketing. But if I told you you could get a gig at seventy-five or ten gig at a hundred, which one would you choose? I understand. Oh yeah. No, I mean it, <laughs> maybe. Uh, you know, two gig would probably be a safer thing to offer. Um, some people just like it and and uh, going with the 
XGS pond that would have uh, you know enough capacity in there that you could you could statistically have customers in that tier and, and not run out of bandwidth on the pond. Um, but it, I think you're going in a, definitely going in the right direction. Have other tiers of service that could bring a premium price. I think you might yeah, be more think... to see business uptake go up uh, with with a premium with a with a premium uh, um, offering and a premium price. Yeah, and that too, uh, Ian. It's uh, so most of the the low cost business services you're going to see from Comcast are based on their coax network, and it'd be easy for us to compete against that with a fiber network, provided it, the customer is just looking for straight internet. Comcast has a lot of add-ons that they can offer businesses. Uh, email it is just for you know a quick quick one. So. Um, and you don't have to offer a lot of bandwidth at businesses to compete against Comcast specifically. Uh, we could have 200 meg service, 300, 500, and uh, we could offer it competitively to businesses. Um, I think the, the issue is how many businesses could we get to come on to, to make a financial impact with the revenue? Yeah, and that was one question I had, which is why you see in the chart, I've got 60 businesses and 120 businesses. Yeah. Just having no idea what Southwick really I, has. I think they're um, safe, safe numbers to play what if with. Yeah. But but you're absolutely right. Between the 60 and 120, it's it's not that big of a, an impact um, on the financials. But if we can we can take, you know, a thousand residential customers and instead of 75 get a hundred dollars from them, that's an extra twenty-five straight to the bottom line. That's that's fantastic. That's the uh that's the dream, but yeah, I think we've got to got to continue to be conservative on the on the estimate. If Whip City's not able to get that much, I don't know how we'd be able to. A question: How much? Assuming that most folks in town are as ignorant as I am about this, and that the baseline, the uh, I guess what are what are the benefits of going to what you're talking about, Jim, about going at like that hundred up to like a hundred or yeah, different speed tiers. Yeah. Um. So with residential, I mean, it's because people are working from home. Yes. So it's not like like. Like, and we have no idea how many people are working from from home. It's it's not like going on, online with Antilly mm -hmm. at, at eight o'clock every night. I mean, there are some folks who use the internet for their occupation. Yeah. I think we'd be able to uh, provide. So, so what what would what would someone who is working from home, what would speak their language, even though they can't, they can't talk about, they have no idea about gigs or anything else like that. Yeah. Um, what would they need for a the, smooth operation? I mean, depending on the certain, really it, it, anything, it, they don't even need a gig. I mean, a gig to actually use it, most, the vast majority of users not including hardcore gamers could could not fill up a gig pipe coming into their house because you have to think about it we're what we'd be getting from westfield if the whole town was lit up with uh let's call four thousand people what we'd be getting from our isp from westfield uh they would only be giving us a bandwidth of less than 20 gig to, to split with the whole town so it, it's based on statistical because yeah. you're you're not you're not taking all that bandwidth continuously, yeah. mostly speaking, all the time. It's it's shared, it's bursty. So that that's you know just how it works. So that so people, uh, you know, if if residents are being able to to get a gig, and the equipment and the networks capable of doing that, even when you know kids are home from school and then they get online and then the usage gets up the network would still be able to handle that the way it's designed. 
Whereas what you hear stories about Comcast, you know, once the kids come home, people are working at home, all of a sudden they can't even do some of their business. So it's just, uh, um, you know, statistically how that usage is, is being impacted. I think that would be, that description would be, should be part of any promotional material going out so that those folks who are we're not gig conscious. Or yeah, we'd want to, uh, you know, fluid. promote that as a selling point. Um, you know, the managed uh, Wi-Fi that Westfield can offer through the um, the router that they're placing out there. Um, you know, those are all benefits. I mean, Comcast yeah. is given that now. So uh, anything that, and depending on what equipment vendor we ultimately decide on, um, you know, some of them have different yeah. options and things that you could you know, put out there as an yeah. offering. Okay. And and just touching on the business thing, they're offering no deals on business, being Comcast. Um, I just I just uh swapped over <clears throat> my plan, I swapped back to residential. I'm paying for gigabit, my work's paying for gigabit. Um and I'm doing another speed test now. I, I'm I'm pulling hundred and one megabits both directions. Um, that's as high as I get. Um, so, you know, what they claim to be giving me as a gigabit is, is garbage. Uh, number one, uh, of course I'm on, I'm off of North Loomis, so I'm out on the edge of town, <clears throat> but the, um, and again, I asked because I've been on business class for about six years, uh, paying about 160 a month for like, it was like. 54 down and 11 up and uh, uh, to, to get anything better was going to cost me more than that um, uh, for the uh, the business class. So we would we would have been pushing closer to the 170, 180 mark uh, to put that in, which is why I went back to residential. Um, but that said, they are they're offering deals. They started offering them last year when we started looking more serious as soon as we went, we were getting ready to go to the uh, town vote uh, was about the time they started offering really good deals. They're giving me, I think I got a three year. I think I got three years contracted at that rate, which is uh, 85 after their discounts. I'm paying about 85 a month right now. Um, after three years, where does it go? It's not going to be 85 anymore, but that's, that's the thing, right? We're in the kind of the catch twenty two where um, uh, they're 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 trying to prevent it from going forward by offering decent rates. A year and a half, two years ago, you couldn't come close to what they're offering right now. Um, that's just reality, and it'll go back to that once this gets squashed, assuming it were to get squashed. And so it's it's one of those things where it's so hard to sit here. I look at the numbers and say, okay, we're out to 2020 or uh, yeah, 2046 um, uh, with a, you know, with, with one uptake. Uh, slide, oh, you, that's on your screen. That's why I can't see the whole thing. Um, yeah, at 85 bucks, we're at like 2050 with a 60 business uptake and 50% uptake residential, um, which is probably the number we want to play in early on, unless. We were going to come in at a lower rate then. I'd feel more comfortable at more of a 55 to 60% residential uptake if we were coming in at like 75, just based on what I know I'm getting. Um, and and to, your, to your point, Jim, most people wouldn't notice the difference. I mean, I stream my TV. I'm uploading and downloading big files all day, every day. I'm connecting to people's computers all day, every day, doing tech support and so on. And would I see a difference if I were to bump to, to, to a, an actual gig? Yeah, probably. Would it be significant? No, I'm not gaming and that sort of thing. So I probably wouldn't really notice a difference. Yeah, and that's where if we, we do offer gig service, we have to convince people that right. you know they're getting benefit for it, even well, if they're not seeing it. We have so, to... It's, Give the value proposition that they're willing to adopt. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we could, we don't want to get into making guarantees because it's, we're not charging enough money, make, make it worthwhile. But 
if you look at all the fine print of any service Comcast is offering for residential or, or basic business class, it's it's always going to say up to a certain speed. Right. So up to a gig, but that doesn't mean that uh, you're ever going to see it unless you get up at maybe three in the morning and, and try running some speed tests and, and doing your work then. Um, you know, that, that's just the way it is. It's um, so we, we have what we would have an advantage to that. So we'd have to capitalize on it. You know, just being right. a, able to offer a, a pure gig, if that's what someone's looking for, they're going to have that most of the time. And if they don't have a gig uh, running a speed test, they're probably going to be getting three or four hundred. You know, that might be the worst, but I, I wouldn't even expect that very often. That would be, uh, you know, that'd be something that if we were seeing that consistently, then we would, uh, you know, have a have to make a network change. I guess so, one thing that I'm concerned about is, um, you know, if basically this goes out until 2050 or 2048, like my thinking is there's some technology that's going to come along that's going to be better than what we're, you know, what we're offering. And then people are going to want to change to, you know, whatever it is that is being offered. And then you're still paying. Yeah. I mean, the biggest source of competition that I think that any network owner, municipal or, or uh, commercial is going to have is, is wireless. You know, some of the big ones, the Verizon's there, right. they're using that um, at least locally because they're not building a Fios. That's that's their game plan. It's going to keep getting better and faster. Uh, Starlink is most likely going to be getting a little faster. So those things will, will always be for competition, probably right. getting better. Um, you can't beat a solid connection on fiber. That's been proven. And, uh, you know, it really is the, the best uh, network in terms of reliability. But, you know, we have to keep it that way. And, and it you know, really is a, a long term game for building so, a network. Hi, it's, it's Ryan. Um, so at this point, like, do you guys feel comfortable to like vote and say we should move this forward? Or do we still need to talk about the numbers? Well, I think that's to. I'll leave it to the subcommittee here because at this point, based on the numbers that I've seen from Whip City and based on what the previous survey said and, and, and not even anecdotal data, but the surveys that we conducted prior to us being reconstituted and presented, mm -hmm. I don't think a 50% take rate is out of the question. I think it's a very realistic target. The question is, is going to be what's going to be the dollar amount we're going to we'll be able to charge. Mm -hmm. And and and, you know, we've talked about this ad nauseum, but, the you know, some little bit of price elasticity of demand of if you're at ninety dollars, you're way under 50 percent. If you're at fifty dollars, you're way over 50 percent. Mm -hmm. If you're at eighty five dollars or seventy five dollars, you're you're right in the hunt for that. And what, what the numbers bore out to me on the Whip City stuff and even on this here um, is that you're very, very close to break even to a little over at a 50% take rate. I don't, I I would love to have, and, and you know, Bob, I did get your email and I, I did compose a, a note over to them, but I haven't heard back yet, um, is, uh, you know, we we did lay out the network to be able to support it, the GPON. No. XGS PON. That's the one. Yep. You know, so we can go and to that's a higher- And the fiber speed. network doesn't, that doesn't matter. Right. But we would have the head end equipment to even come out yeah. of the gate at a higher speed if we wanted to offer it second tier or come out of the gate yeah. at a higher speed. Um, and, and well, we'll come back to it. But my take on it is I think this having this service is going to be advantageous for current homeowners and businesses. It's also going to be an economic driver for folks looking to move to this area. I think, uh, you know, that having, you know, a fiber internet infrastructure in the town is going to be as critical as any other utility going forward. And, 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 and for business or for, for residential, um, the, you know, the nature of work for a lot of folks has changed where they, it's absolutely imperative that they have, you know, reliable, consistent, high-speed bandwidth. Um, and for business, you know, it doesn't almost matter what the business is. That's a requirement. 
if you have customers, you know, it, it's not the vast amounts of bandwidth, it, but it has to be there all the time and it has to be reliable. Doesn't matter if you're selling Buffy and someone comes in to swipe their credit card, that's not high bandwidth, but the reliability is just huge. Um, and, you know, and for other businesses that, you know, that may be interested in, in coming to town or developing in town, it, it's not, go, it's going to be an information-based business, no matter what type of business it is. So I think it's strategically important as a development for the town. The, the question is, is can, and, and, you know, agree a hundred percent. I think the bigger threat to, to this in the long term is, is wireless, but I just think that it's the nature of wireless that it cannot compete in, in, at least in the medium range term with wire, fiber, whatever you want to call it, just for reliability. It, it's, you know, fiber is not affected by weather. It's not affected by, you know, a lot of congestion. And frankly, the 5G stuff that, you know, we're seeing is, is going to require a ton of build out, huge, huge build out locally in order to implement it. You know, if you go to some cities now and look at what they're building out for 5G, it's like every other pole, or they start putting up light poles through downtowns in order to provide the coverage for 5G. So it doesn't go as far as the speeds. 4G yeah. stuff. So it's, it's a big if I if I can jump in real quick, that is a possibility. If we build out the network, we might be able to lease space on the network to things like Verizon for those 5G access points. Yeah. Can't build it into the financials, but it is a possibility. Now, but, you know, Verizon owning so many of these, you know, they've done it a few times already in our town where they put, um, you know, they put infrastructure on existing poles um, in town. And, uh, you know, they, they built up a, a smaller cell site for to, to cover gaps, but they haven't even started a 5G rollout in this area other than you know the broader over overarching tower stuff that you see they but, probably won't you're going to the densely populated 100%, areas so 100 percent. but you know here i just you know just from where i sit you know the starlink is obviously a threat some people are going to buy that that and it, you know it, it's a good service it's not it has, cheap it's so not that expensive. It's not. it has latency it has yep. some other some other issues to it so i when we embarked on this this endeavor, you know, and whether it was with WIP or with somebody else, it was really about, um, you know, there was a there was a groundswell of support for it. The financial models say that we can do this and retire the debt before this stuff is technically technologically obsolete, especially the fiber infrastructure itself. You know, and and the XGS pond, and that won't go. You know, become obsolete. I mean, there's going to be more demand for sure. bandwidth. That's been a trend that's still going, yep. and and the best way to deliver that reliably is with a fiber network. So that that's definitely in our yep. favor. Um, so it's we need to be aware of the potential competition from wireless, and but you know, Comcast is the biggest threat. Yeah. Um, I, fifty percent. It's it could be achievable. I mean, if everything is done right, I don't think we should really calculate for anything beyond that mm -hmm. if we're lucky enough to ever get that far um you know i think that's uh, that's a victory right there so but you know and and i i absolutely talk right through the question but the the basic question is is i think at this point i'd like the subcommittee to to kind of weigh in at this point and say we we should go back to our appointing authority, which is the select board, and say we should or should not proceed with this project based on the financial data that's been presented and that we've developed and discussed as a committee. And I, to be honest with you, not, and not for any political reason, I just I I think there's folks on this board that have done a ton of work financially and that have a ton of experience in this space. I want to hear everyone's thoughts and opinion on this and then call for a vote from the subcommittee and then we can go back to the appointing authority with the result of that and then let them decide where to go from here because they're you know I am but one member on that board but we you know that is the deciding ending deciding authority I've made my you know my opinion clear but you know certainly you guys have been in this th for the long haul we've, you, we've sat through all the presentations we've sat you know we've sat with finance we've sat with whip city 
you know, Mr. Boyd and, and everyone else has done a ton of work on the financial piece with, with the, the rest of the crew to try to figure out what the take rate would look like and what, what a, you know, at what price we, you know, we think we're going to be. And are we going to be able to retire the debt based on the updated costing that we've developed for the project that's presented by Whip City? And that really should be. And lastly is, you know, is this a worthwhile endeavor for us to, and you know, if we can retire the debt um, in a reasonable amount of time with income generated from the service, should we proceed? And we feel the uh, amount of time to retire, retire that debt is 20, 25 years. It's going to take a, it's going to take a, and I don't know the answer to that, yeah. Mr. Boyd. I think we're going to have to, we're going to have to borrow in chunks as we build out. And then as we build out, there's going to be revenue to come in. That's really difficult to model. Whip City took a best stab at it, you know, to kind of give us some numbers because based on their experience of what they saw. And, you know, obviously we, based on the, the number of fiber hoods we would have and where we would go first to try to hit density, it's going to start having revenue come in. But like I said, once we step off that ledge, we're committed. So even the you know, we can't just leave off the sparse ones at the end or what have you. We've got, we made a commitment as part of the project to do the whole thing. Do we do we have any numbers that can be discussed at this meeting in regards to the cost estimates? I know there was concern with an NDA that that hadn't been. We did execute that. OK. And I can get you those numbers. They're not uh, under. We checked with everybody. They're not for. It has to do with. We have the costing numbers of what the project will cost. That was presented. Um, there was some other costing numbers in there from Whip City that they don't want. Yeah, and that's understandable. I guess my my thinking is, and, and this isn't trying to get a number right now, mm -hmm. but what state is the design in right now? Is it nearing completion? Are they halfway done? Do we have any... I honestly and, and I'm asking that. because you've got two things going on. You got the design that's going on, where you know they've been surveying the town, they're starting to design it, um, and then they're also surveying for uh, make ready yep. applications. So we got to apply to the. Those are done. Okay. The poll applications are all. So I the believe applications are, all are in. So now yep. this next step is uh, the utilities are going to go out there with an agent from Westfield, and they're going to go and look at the polls and and each poll that that is saying that there might be an issue or not. And that's going to provide the closer number to this top number that we have no idea, but you know, it starts with a four on this and it's very large. Um, until that's done and the design is completed, we're just going to have these theoretical numbers. So I don't know if we can really make a recommendation until we really have some of that back. You know, if if it comes back, I mean, make, if make ready is is less, that's great. Then we can put that in. There's a good chance it could be less. There is, but that's why they took that as a kind of a. If I recall, that was not the best case scenario for make ready. They yeah, I think that's use, worst case. They, yeah, and so that's and, and you want to do that because hundred percent. It's if nothing it, to yeah. pay. You know, you can pay five grand to have a pole replaced if there's transformers and and all kinds of other uh, networks. And that's why we didn't. We, this whole yeah. process has been deliberately loaded with kind of the worst yeah. case or, you know, well, you, bad you need, things happening yeah. so that we don't, you know, just frankly been involved in enough projects where, oh, it's a cup of coffee a day or, oh, yeah. it's this is it's going to be right. this because it's going to be great. And then it never is. And then so we kind of frame things up as kind of a worst case. And that's yeah. why that make ready number is so large. I don't I don't want to say it's going to be less than that because it could. Well, we want to, yeah, but, we want to use it. So that's but, why I'm asking right. if anything's come back. I haven't seen anything so, back yet. So the applications are in. Yep. We won't know, you know, it's going to be months yeah. before we get back a, a cost estimate. But then once we have that, then we'll know because that that's really, uh, it's, it's almost a third of the cost of the overall network. We need to know how much that's going to move. We hope it's going to be less, but I mean, a million less is going to have huge impacts in, in Bob's model. So um, there's that and also the actual design itself. Um, there's just two goals with the design. One, you can generate a materials list and then you can put real, you know, you're going to need 
600 of these items um, based on the number of houses they, they get. So then you can start really getting realistic numbers. So what we're working with, I don't even want to say if it's plus or minus 10 or 25%, we, we don't know until we get that design done. And that's, it's really the least expensive part of the project is, is having that design. Um, make ready applications are pretty pricey. So, you know, at least my feeling well, those, is- Those were, the make ready apps were done and yeah. submitted. So yeah. we kind of- so We'll get a cost back from them saying, for this application, number one, it's going to cost- Right, right, right. The make ready. It's going to cost $432,000. Right, right, right. Um, and we've got to look at that, look at them all as a whole. And before we start, that's, you know, I think that's when we're going to have real numbers. Um, they're going to be valid for a while, you know, even if, cause it's going to take some time to do make ready. It takes a long time to build a network. So I just think that it, you know, because we do have, you know, a budget right now without doing any borrowing, um, you know, finding that final design number getting updated quotes and then finding out what the make ready is going to cost. That's going to put us in a better position to know what to recommend. It literally could be, you know, plus or minus, um, I don't know, 20%, 25%. I mean, throw a number. Right? If we make a recommendation, my understanding is that then the select board will be looking at it and we're just making a recommendation. Right. Yeah. But we, I, I so, liken this to any other, you know, if you've gone to town meeting and see other boards recommend mm -hmm. a, a spending article, for example, right? And then the finance committee weighs in on it. And, you know, the finance committee's purview is we have the money at that sure. point for some of these things, for some statutory mm -hmm. boards, right? Because they didn't sit through all the hours and hours of Whip City numbers and spend hours in front of the computer with the financial models, right? That the select board is really looking at it going, okay, we told you guys to go do that work. Give us your recommendation yeah. back. So... I think that that's, and, you know, I hear what you're saying, I think, but we have to, and I don't know if we're at that point or we can query further, but we have to, at some point we've spent some money already, mm -hmm. right? We've had, you know, we, and we have, you know, the money, you know, I don't want to spend beyond about where we've spent. In my mm -hmm. opinion, we yeah. shouldn't spend as a town more money than we've already spent as part of the application process sure. and, and so on and so forth. And then they come back with the make ready number. Maybe that that's the point that you make that decision, but we have to keep big, moving yeah. along. I just want to make sure that we're, we, we've properly updated the select board as to, you know, what, you know, if we said, all right, this number is just untenable, the models just don't yeah. work. We can, we don't have to wait for that, but it is, you're right. It does kind of split the hairs down to where we're, we, not a bad idea because, you know, I think, I don't want to speak out of turn. Mm -hmm. I I think I know roughly where we spent on all the applications, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's not an insignificant sum, but yeah. it's not a ginormous amount of money. It's, it's not a six it's, figure number. It's within. Oh, okay. I thought it was going to be more than that. Um, so we're still within the the grants and budget that we started out with, correct? And because the design cost isn't generally, it's not going to change other than because that's based on. Forget if it's based on based on the footage or the number of households, but you know one of those formulas. So that's essentially finite. Um, the make ready applications are essentially finite. They're in, so we know that cost. Now it's really just it's getting the make the ready number. Getting the results of that. What's the cost going to be if you for them to do the work that we want them to? What's that cost going to be? And I think that'll drive everything else from there. So that, that's what I brought it up because I don't know if we can really make an informed decision saying based on our model, we should go ahead or based on our model, we shouldn't because our model is based on numbers that the best numbers we had, but they're all estimates. But having the design finished and getting the make ready costs coming in, then we'll have some real numbers. That can be part of the recommendation. We can yeah. basically say, yes, we think we should move forward, and this is what we think we need to look at next. Yeah, because it's already, we'd already spent, you know, we're spent the money on the applications. We are spending the money on the design. We know that that's, you know, it's not going to keep uh, increasing. That's pretty much a fixed cost. Once we have that, then, you know, that's when we can start, you know, really looking at these numbers. We can get um, an idea of what the construction costs will be. 
based on Westfield's experience with materials and, and their contract prices they're seeing for labor, that's when you can really put it into the the model, which the model is is fantastic, and we can start. I, playing I mean, with if them. you're saying that could change twenty five percent, I then threw that number, out, is, but it's the way to go. We got to be go, we got to be prepared for it. Well, to be know? clear, I just and just for folks following at home too is. We don't think it'll go. It should not go up twenty five percent. This was kind of a worst case scenario. Yeah, I, I don't think. No, no, I, no, mean, I meant up. the savings. I mean the savings that even if it's a ten percent savings, that's a right. significant. It, right, it might be I, significant. Right, and I just don't want to be in a place because we've all seen it with anything to yeah. do with, and frankly, involving the government where they it's this, and then all of a sudden it's you know it's it's a bigger number with this this for this particular project. We've attempted to take kind of the worst case mm -hmm. scenario and and say, okay, it's it's you know you have the number in front of you with a four in it, right? And go, okay, that's the number. If it were less than that, great, it's going to help yeah. the model. But in you know right now, it's 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 dicey at that number where we, where we turn up. But I just yeah, think, I agree. you know, I think you have to look at strategically and 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 whatnot. And if that you know. Uh, you know, I want to give everyone the opportunity to weigh in here um, so that I can report back to my board on um, when we meet next. I don't think we meet next week because of the holiday, so we meet the following week. But that's certainly the the goal of mine. Um, so, so let me let me let me ask this, Doug, then. I mean, and, and this is because um, I get I get where Jim's coming from. And, and at the same time, I look at this and I, I, I think we've done our best to work with as you say worst case numbers um and based on that is it not fair to recommend or not recommend based on the worst case numbers we have before us today uh that they pursue it further pending the outcome of final quotes and all that for the uh, make ready and because it's really at the end of the day now it, it becomes a select board's job to say yay or nay and finance committee's job to say yay or nay the, the we're, we're we're willing to go forward because we're really working off of again best best guess allegedly worst case scenario numbers um uh, i i i mean is is it on us to 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 whittle it down to the to the penny here before making a recommendation i'm not sure it is i'm not saying it isn't i'm just kind of tossing it out there Well, what's the select board going to do with that information? If well, we if we say yes, we support it going ahead. It's still, you know, we're quite a bit of time away from. But there's design work, and then I think that the the other work that needs to be done um, is I think we really do need to set up some level of governance and process behind the municipal light plant. Right today, everything's been to kind of now. on a. Yeah. On a and 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 it's it's not it's not a huge expense, but it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Right? There's legal work, and there's probably got to be some. I, I want to just call it people infrastructure put in place in town hall. Not hiring folks, but just right now, it's myself yeah. has been talking to Whip City or Nicole Parker or mm -hmm. Nadine, and and you know preparing all of the you know the documentation, certificates of insurance, oh, yeah. and blah blah blah. You know, there's been a lot of background this, work that's administration been, yeah and, it, you know, and any... it's going to get there'll be more before there's less and then you start getting into the actual implementation of the service um because we actually do have some ability um you know we also have to um we have to locate where the hut will be and figure out you know yeah. work with all the related departments on you know a turf war on where sure. that thing's going to yeah. be and this that and the other and um you know, all, and it's going to take a while to do that, even to you know once you say go, because once we do, if we do say go, we actually can start providing some of this service on on uh, in some of these areas almost straight away because of the access from the rail trail, mm -hmm. right? We're not as dependent on some other cities and towns that need a lot more infrastructure work than we do, aka West Springfield, right? Who's follow, you know they're a little ahead of us right now mm -hmm. in their make ready work, so. So if you help me with here, so these numbers here we have here, not not looking at the Comcast numbers, but on the other sheet, these are these are worst case numbers, right? 
roughly, more or less worst case numbers. But the numbers that we that we put together, yeah. So it's still up there. We've so we've gotten it previously. So yeah. the the odds are it it probably won't increase. The odds are, if anything, it's going to decrease. Odds. Oh, what decrease? Well, I, I don't know. Oh, right. I, so I guess it'll would... probably go down a little bit. It's the hope. But uh, everything else has been construction the... costs are going to go up every year. Just materials figure. But the longer we wait, the three percent, five percent. We're, we're, we're down that path. I mean, as far as the the construction schedule is not moving in or out from here. And guys, I just got to let you know we may have to take a brief recess to adjourn because there's another board that has a a meeting in this room. So we may have to. Yep. We are. Um, is conference room three available? Can you just open it in case we have to shoot out and run down there? All right. Thank you. Well, we shoot out and run down there. Yeah, we probably the issue is we're not going to resolve this in the next five minutes. Nope. So um, we are going to take a brief re recess because we have to move to a different room because there's another board that has this room on a more regular basis than us. And so how are we going to do this? I think if we do this right, we're gonna no we never yeah we're gonna we're gonna pause for a moment and we're gonna move to the other room uh tom and is clip still on clip if you're still on if we by any chance lose you just dial back in but we're gonna try to preserve it okay we'll do okay and and bob and ryan and ian okay so i re resume the recording as well all right where were we? Sorry about the interruption. I think we we're kind of going around the room, and now that everybody moved chairs, we'll have to remember where we were going around the room. Where were we? I think we're um, talking about a recommendation. Yeah, right. correct. I think we were at a point where we were thinking we should take a vote. I I think I don't think we're gonna have a problem getting the fifty percent take rate. Talking. You know, from talking to people around town, people hate contest. <clears throat> and they're very anxious to see this come in. That's true. We, we got to, the people that we're going after are people that are current streamers or people that would leave Comcast Triple Play to become a streamer because that's all we can offer with the internet. You know, just basic internet service, surfing and then you know, streaming video. Uh, it's getting more popular, but. Um, it's not unusual for people in, in any towns when they say, oh, the towns were getting fiber. Okay, cool. I can, how do, how do I get ESPN on here? And then all of a sudden you're, they're being introduced to streaming if they don't already do it. Which gives you multiple, multiple choices. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think 50%, it's, it's, it's a ideal. I, I'd be uncomfortable with anything more than that. Yeah, I agree, Jim. From a projection perspective, I, I think fifty percent is where we got to sit. Um, any anything higher is it would be nothing more than hopeful, um, and would be awesome if we achieve it. But I think fifty percent is 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 kind of a fair line to sit at. Hello. So, so am I still connected? No, you're still connected. I think uh, they dropped off or muted. I don't see. Uh, I do see Doug in the meeting still, but I can't hear them at all. Yeah, I don't hear. Them. I'm not hearing them as well. Can you hear us now? Uh, I heard something. On screen. Let me turn this off. Can you hear us now? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. 
Okay, so when you turn the you turn the video on, the audio goes off. So we're gonna go away. We're going this way. God darn Comcast. All right. Anyway, um, no, I I don't think we could use any number higher than fifty percent. I think fifty percent is at the higher end of an estimate. Yeah. An yeah. estimated spectrum of what we would expect to take. Um. So, you know, there's been a lot. I you know personally, I've heard a lot of pushback from others when. You know, you know, looking through the numbers, questioning that take rate number as as being very realistic. I personally, I think it is, but it, again, it's just my opinion. Um, but I think you know what we were talking about before. And I, were you on the phone the whole time yeah. until you got here? All right, so you're you're completely up to speed. All right, so um, I think we use that as the basis, and then. You know, aim to shoot higher, but never. I don't. I don't think you can use any number higher than that in an estimate, um, for for planning purpose. But so based on that, it's a twenty five year payback with a fifteen million dollar loan. Fifteen million dollars worth of loans. So that fifteen million, but one of the when we were talking with Westfield, they well, they took their paperwork with them. Um, I understand why. So, um, but. After looking at that, what we don't have in here, I don't think, is the cost of the installations. And then we went based on their estimate. Or are you talking about uh, the connection to individual? Well, they, they cost what it's going to cost the, the town to do it. So, for example, if someone uh, has a house 200 feet off the road um, and they want underground, you know, how much is, are we going to pay? To have that run, say if they have to use existing underground underground utilities, it's going to cost us more. Uh, the drop cable itself that goes from the terminal on a pole into the house, that's part of the cost. And I don't know if we modeled in the cost of the O and T and router. I thought that that was, that was in there. Okay, but I thought that there was like another, I'll throw out maybe two million dollars that is is a cost we want to see. In our model, just to really, you know, get the numbers right, and that's what I'm not sure if we have everything. Didn't West didn't Westfield have a cost all in with everything, installations, all the equipment? Yeah, I believe that's the number we're using. I thought it was it like was a budgeted million number. All in. I don't I don't want to speak out of turn, but but and so so someone check my memory is I think there was a budgeted number. There are going to be there are going to be locations where the install is arduous and way more than average. And therefore there's going to be a, an additional cost to that resident or business to connect just because if they have a one mile long driveway or, you know, or some other thing that prevents the easy installation of a drop or on, or underground or, you know, to the, to the, what do you I, call the I, DMARC or I whatever. That, I just want to make sure we don't miss it because that's a significant Sure. Operations cost paying for a technician to go out there, run the drop either from the pole or through the existing conduit, go out there, uh, get the ONT fired up, turn up the service. You know, it's uh, generally you're, you're looking at two to three hours of time there. So, you know, to throw a number on that, four, four to five hundred dollars per installation. So, we, you know, we're not going to successfully charge that to the resident. So, a lot of that is going to be part of our network cost. That's what I don't know if that's because I, I haven't seen. Well, that would be an additional it. cost for the resident if this. Well, we're way not off, to, way off from right. I'm, I'm talking someone that's 150 feet off the road. Yeah, it's still going to be, you know, four. It's, you could probably throw a number of 400 dollars, and and I think it's probably in their model. I just don't know if if we have that built into ours. We have built in right now a 100 dollars charge. Um, okay. And if that proves to be on right. average of 200, and, and that's okay. we may make it 200. But, but people will say, okay, I'll pay 100 bucks. But if, if our cost is going to be four or 500 right. per household on average, I don't think that's unrealistic. Um, then that's that's going to change. That's going to take rate. Yeah. So if. But was there. And that's why I'm asking for someone to check me because I. Didn't we. Didn't they have an installation cost per. Unit built into 
the cost model and then said, if it's outside of this, then you're going to have to figure out how to recover that cost. I they, want to say yes, but I'm not entirely sure. They may have had it in there, but what is it? Because I don't think it is in here. It's in the 19, right? Uh, I think it's 17. Let's see. Okay, it's uh, part of the total building. Yeah, this is really just the build, you know, overhead and underground distribution. That's that's fiber plant. That's not the drop to the house. So I don't think it's in here. Am I allowed to say numbers? Yeah, I don't think. Okay. Yeah, so by all means, 4.4 .4 for the total make ready, 12.185 for the total build out. Okay, and then there's make ready of 302,000, uh, construction of 75,500. So that, so that 12, say 12.5, you have what went into that? 17 on the total. Okay, um, we'll That's, I kind of recall like, about 17. Breakout. Mm -hmm. So if there's 17 is what you've been in with, yeah, that, that's what we want to work with. I have a stupid question. There's no stupid question. There are not. If we, as part of all these estimates and the numbers that you look at for the route, do we have to cross with a salary of the manager of this operation? We have 103 annually budgeted for maintenance and infrastructure costs. So that would be it would not know, be a full time job. Cole, if Cole gets hit, got to fix it. We would, we're not going to make a claim on insurance every time. Yes, yeah, doesn't include insurance. Yeah. So, so you know, it's just things that have lightning hits or power comes down that burns the fiber. Okay, that's twenty five thousand dollars to repair that. Those are the things that are that are coming. Um, so that that's I think it's a good line to start right there. Yeah, I, I guess in terms of just the installation material and labor, if that's in there and we're comfortable with it and confident, then, then that's the number we want to use. Who's going to be the point of contact? There would be somebody. Yeah, some, some towns, people. so. You know, and how much would they be paid? Because how much we pay them is going to condition how much. It's not a full time job. So most of the day-to-day -day tasks are going to be handled by Westwood City. Now, they're going to get the calls. Our service doesn't work. Um, they're going to be coordinating field services. Um, we need we need someone in the MLP, someone that's going to handle uh, this annual poll, attachment fees, things that come up. Residents need a place to go if they're not happy with the service they're getting, you know, because we're hiring them to run our network. So you got to have someone. You don't want to have them go to the select board all the time because you know they're not happy with something. You know, oh, they still will though. Well, they may if they don't. Like, <laughs> but, but no, the but ML, I, the MLP no, manager. He raises a, an excellent point, and I I I make light only because I can. Um, it that's kind of what we talked about a little bit, or, or I spoke a little bit about it earlier tonight was governance. Is that if we're going to proceed, we need to fully establish a municipal light board. Now maybe that is the selectman. The board of selectmen acting as the municipal light plant until the service is up and running, and and or maybe at another time there becomes a municipal light board, if you will, that becomes the administrative board and has some administrative support. I don't see it needing a full time person just because the call center is outsourced to Whip City. You have the technicians is Whip City, so if someone does stuff a poll, it's not going to be a you know what I mean? But there will be administrative support in town hall. Yeah, we could we, we could get need, that information. We need to have an intelligent point of contact. Yes, but I don't think see it being a full time job. Well, correct. It could be but, someone. But so I've heard numbers of you know, twelve thousand dollars a year as a stipend for someone acting in that role to be part time. They could be a, an existing town employee that right. adds a little extra um, responsibilities. Uh, or it could be you know, elected. There's all different ways to do it, but 
you know, it shouldn't be full. If it's full time, it's been something wrong. So my recommendation right. would be to have the town form this municipal board, or at least somebody that represents it, and they're the one that can ultimately make the decision whether to continue with this or not. Because a lot of these depend on what rates are going to be, what take rates are going to be, mm -hmm. and all we can do is look at the possibilities of municipal priorities. So I, I don't personally don't want to commit the town to $25 million debt if that's what it turns into. Well, I think what true. But I think based on the numbers we have, we need we need to give the select board the guidance to either proceed to the next, you know, maybe it's waiting till we get back to make, you know, the final make ready number, or we tell them, look, we we're comfortable with where we are with right now. And, but, and, and the other part of the recommendation, in, in my opinion, to this board to, as part of their recommendation is, is that if you go ahead, you've got to go all in and you've got to go and commit, you have to have the fortitude to see it through because if you, you cannot take your foot off the gas to once you start beyond about where we are right now. Once you get the make ready number and tell folks to go start spending money to make those polls ready, you're committed. Right. Because you can't have to bond for you're gonna have we're, A, we're gonna have to bond. We have and we have a three million dollar, you know, we have the money we have. We have a three million dollar borrowing authorization. We're gonna have you know there is a check and balance here, right? We have to go back to town meeting at some point to borrow more money. What happens if they say no? Well, that's always the risk. And we'll have right? a great full and, line and We'll have that and you'll have and and frankly they are, and that's up to you know the select board and and you as members of town meeting to speak to that issue at town meeting is look, we we were up front with everybody and said, look, we we're this three million is not all we're gonna ever borrow. We're gonna need to borrow more. Mm -hmm. And if we and and frankly, you bring up the analogy that I brought up at the beginning of this meeting is the sewers, right? If you decide not to borrow the additional money in order to finish the project, you're going to be left with an enormous burden that's going to be, right. be left on the taxpayer to handle because the infrastructure will be built to handle thousands of residents and businesses and you're servicing hundreds. So, so to retire the debt would be, you know, and you're obligating yourself. Yeah, that brings yeah. up an interesting point. So the town gave us the authorization or the People of the town gave the town the authorization to do a $3 million borrowing. Mm -hmm. People of the town authorized the town to form the municipal light and power plant. Twice. The people of the town have not authorized the borrowing of $15 million total or to proceed with this. Yep. Perhaps. And I don't think they money. would. I don't yeah, think they would do that. The people of the town that give that authorization to say, yes, we understand the projection is going to need to borrow 15 million dollars yeah yeah you're right and that's maybe I mean, I mean from this meeting tonight i think that better, we would better idea the cost based on the design and yeah is carry it till we get that make ready number make ready is always a wild time it takes the longest and it's the, the most uncertain so you're better off aiming higher and I mean, we're not going to spend any more money until we do, till we get that report, correct? Like, camera's not on. He can't see me shaking my head. <laughs> correct. So, the modeling, <laughs> um, one thing what uh, Whip City said when they were here is that Verizon Eversource will hold on to that money for a year before they start doing anything. And it was two and a half years before they were finished with any of the service areas. So, the modeling that I have takes that into account is two and a half years from the time make ready begins, or basically money spent to when we can even start building out, at which point there's a three month period before you can even start collecting records. Well, we should be able to build once some of the make ready is completed. If it's going to be by area, ideally. Oh, well, this is by area. Yeah. So, but it, you, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to wait till all the make ready is done before you start physically building. But it's 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 safer if you do sometimes you, you just can't start because there's one pole in the middle of you and this whole side of town. 
and you can't get past it until it's done. So a little of this, a little of that. Yeah. If you can build earlier, okay, now you're going to have that money earlier to build it out. Yeah. But you can also get the property back. So. I think in terms of what we presented to town, this is our next step, right? Mm -hmm. I think so. I think so. Whatever we, as part of that conversation with the town before the selection, just make it, make it clear that this is the point of no return. Yes. You know, is that. If we if we vote to go ahead here, we cannot turn back. It will cost us more to turn back, and it would be hideous if we turn back. Well, our vote is just a recommended change. Right, right. But, but but making close, whatever decision is made, it's a point of no return. Yes. So right. At and least once a yes decision is made, it is a point of no return. And, th and that's been communicated to the select board and as part of my weekly, because it's on the select board agenda as old business, and every week, we talk about different things and you know what's going on in these meetings. I report back, but one of the things that I've talked about, and I'll certainly address it again, just so that <laughs> it's been made abundantly clear, is that you know once you do step off from here, you know once you have the make ready number and you start expending money towards make ready, you can't stop. You can't stop. Right. You've got to go. And so, you know, I don't know. What we and we were pretty clear at town meeting. You're, and you you I guess. You know, one we were clear at town meeting that the three million was not going to get it done. We but we needed three million for you know as part of the make ready. What I'm I was my thought process behind three plus the ARPA gets us the make ready, right? And look where it came. Right. right. Yeah. That, that was the educated guess, right? And so but then you got to start to borrow to actually build it out. But you, you can't spend three million you know, four million dollars on make ready and then not fund the project. Right. And that's and, and I'll tell you the rest. And, and and just to draw back, <clears throat> excuse me, just to draw back one other analogy, right? Mm -hmm. It needs to be made clear to the townspeople through the process is the town's done that before. When has the town done that before? Uh the Great Sewer Massacre of 2016. We spent six hundred thousand dollars Town meeting voted to approve a design for a pump station and sewer work along um, Powder Mill Road, then didn't fund the project. When they came back with the number mm -hmm. to build it and said, yeah, no. And so the 600,000 went out the window. That was money was spent and was gone. So. We don't want to, it, again, this, unfortunately, the sewer analogies keep happening, but yeah. I don't want, we don't want to be in that position. So we were very clear up front at the town meeting that, look, the 3 million is to get us to where we'd want to build a project. Then you've got to go and actually build out the rest of the, rest of the infrastructure right. and actually construct the, the network. So would it, would it be advisable it, for next May to get on the warrant to start you know, with a borrowing article? Yeah. Yeah, that's what you I was know, about because we'll probably be at that point. We shouldn't we shouldn't start spending anything on make ready to actually to do the work until we know we can get the rest of the money to build. Yeah, it. exactly. It, that's exactly what I wanted to say. Exactly. I'll be fine about then. We'll have actual footages, um, how much is underground, how much is aerial, oh. and knowing that they'll have footages to the houses. They'll know approximate drop length so you can get some cost skills around that too. That one might be too loud. Well, can you folks hear us now? Yeah, I, I hear you fine. They they could hear us. Yeah, I was just getting through that. Yeah. Well. Hey, this is Ryan. Um, I have to step off the meeting. Uh, I have a event I have to go to. Okay. Oh, boy. Um, no. I, I'm sorry. I I. That's all right. I, I think. Have, I have you have five more minutes or you've got to go? No, I got five minutes. All right. Because I think we've, I'm going to run out of what? Talking about a minute too. Um, we should. So let's move this forward as far as where we are, as far as putting our thoughts together. So 
One is we should recommend to this the select board that. Well, let me make sure I've captured it because I, I I think from what I've heard is is that we should put forth a Warren article for a future town, and I would recommend it be at an annual town meeting, not a special mm -hmm. block. Yeah. Um, subject to the Board of Selectmen, um, a future borrowing authorization for the delta between what the build-out is estimated mm -hmm. and um, and the three million, and then and then we make that final decision whether we tap into the three hundred thousand, uh, the three million and or execute on the borrowing authorization for above that once we have the final make ready. Is that, is, did I capture the sentiment in the room? Yeah. Yes. That's yes. Right. Yeah. Now, to do that, does that constitute a point of no return? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, well, it, would, yeah. it would go to the town meeting and then that it, the town would decide, really, I guess, at that point, correct? And that amount, excuse me, would roughly be ballpark. Do the math. About fifteen million. But we'll want us. But we're not. But we do. We really need that fifteen million if we're getting money coming in for revenue for this, revenue. This in is the first, like the first phase. This is the the peak borrowing amount. Is so I, I kind of have it as we have money, we pay off old debt, and then take new debt. Mm -hmm. To cover new expenses and build out, um, so the maximum is about fifteen million. But if every you know in a perfect. Yeah, but I don't plan. think we would ever have to borrow. We would have fifteen million outstanding at. At a maximum. Yeah. With the revenue be coming in, paying that down. So, the the analysis with with it at seventeen all in. What what monthly charge makes that work? Over twenty years or twenty five is um it's fifty percent take rate it's yeah. eighty five dollars per month with one hundred and twenty businesses it's fifteen point one million paid off in twenty twenty eight oh sorry twenty forty eight okay twenty five years um with those buildings well, between businesses and fifty percent residential take rate right and better than that. It's going to pay off soon. The, the cost we estimated for business that they'd be paying for a month? Uh, $100. Uh, 140 I think. I, I think we yeah, yeah, we'd say, we'd say 150 ish yeah, depending on what it you know, but you wouldn't have to give them a gig. We can say, listen, we'll give you 250 and it's still going to be better than they can get a town cast in there. If you guys could speak up just a little bit, I can hardly hear you. Sorry about that, Ian. They were arguing or uh, yeah. discussing no, I, some of the finer points. I kind of, I kind of got that. Of finance on this, I wouldn't call it. Yeah, I was just asking what, um, which number worked with, you know, which monthly payment by residences and and how many businesses into the model would uh would make the bond pay back in, in 20, 24, 25 years. Got it. So all the models I yeah. did, the business rate is hundred and forty dollars. Yeah, so we're looking at eighty five, which is more than I like, but I mean it's it's not unrealistic. That's why I did the analysis, dropping that monthly fee down yeah. to seventy five dollars for residential, because you know price the elasticity, elasticity even get a higher take rate and a lower price. To do it at seventy five, what's the how much borrowing does that support? Can you back into it that way? Um, it's actually identical with a 60% take rate and a $75 fee. What at 75.50 though? Hmm? What if you had a 50% take rate at $75? I did not do those numbers. So I cannot say it would be higher than 15 million and later than 2048. That's I mean, a safe yeah. assumption. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So let's, let's do this. Can we, it will be the position of this board and we'll take a vote to that effect um, that we ask the select board to um, put forth a bonding article for the additional um, 
bonding authorization at, at the next annual. It's actually 15.1. Okay. Plus or minus. You know, it's not yep. And then we have, um, and then we await, and we'll have those make ready numbers ahead of that town meeting by quite a bit, Hopefully I believe. Too. Wait the make ready. Never mind. I mean, I've, you know, six to 12 months are estimates that I've yep. used. In We're a couple of months in already. So yeah. for that, was there anything else? And then, you know, I, I think we should have them continue to discuss what, you know, from here, what more would you like from us? And, you know, what, what role should, you know, start to structure out the MLP part of it? Um, and because you, you mentioned governance and, you know, what, you know, and, and administration, maybe, this is that committee to do that, or we form one and ask people to be on it, obviously, to see where to go from here. Because actually, I think we're coming up to the point, the point of no, where we need someone who is pretty much dedicated to this, being compensated at a level where we're As was explained to me many years ago, certain salaries just guarantee you're keeping a chair warm. At another compensation level, you're paying for the range to be attached to that chair warm. I'll bring that back to the select board and let them discuss that because that's going to be in their purview. And I'm also trying to be sensitive to Ryan Ryan's schedule. And I do want to get, I appreciate everybody coming together on well, relatively I, short notice. I, I, I did suggestion too. I mean, it's fine. I, I like don't rush on me. Um, I can wait. I the we haven't done like a survey for who wants to join the service recently, correct? No, maybe sir. that would be another recommendation that we send out like a town survey or something to just get the current feel with maybe the pricing sure. point. The town meeting. Okay. That'll give us a, I mean, people respond to surveys, you never get a huge sample, but it could give us a little more confidence whether looking at 50% or $75 or $85 is yep. that ballpark. Yeah, and I can. Um, There's going to be a lot of people yeah. that want it for next to nothing. And oh, you get 100% for free, right? Yeah, but no, but we, you know, we, we did this data and <clears throat> granted it's three or four years old now, but you were, you were part of that. We did a whole, and you know, we had, Several hundred, yes. you know, responses pre-COVID, just pre-COVID, right? And um, you know, it was quite a quite a good response. But it's, maybe it's nigh time. Okay, so I've added that bonding authorization, uh, administration. and MLP structure. And then what should we do with this subcommittee from here based on where we are right now? I think we just look at the next steps in terms of what happens. With if we're this. able to get a read on it. Do we want to convene, get the uh, make like the report back before it goes to the select board? Oh, we, we certainly will do that when we get it back. I mean, we're not through. I just think we, I want to try to set, you know, where we're going to be post all of that stuff. Cause I mean, obviously they're gonna, they're probably gonna want some advice back on when you get the final make ready numbers as to where we go from here. So, um, and by the way, I will send you all an email as to when this, this will be on the, uh, I believe the next select board agenda. So not next Monday, the following Monday, you know, by all means, you're more than welcome to and encouraged to attend. Um, to discuss this at length. I, mean, I think it's good to get back just once a month just to talk about the state of the sure. design, make ready, um, you know, other steps as we get, say we get past town meeting um, and approved. I mean, we've got a negotiated construction contract with Wood City. Yep. Um, we're still in that with operator contract. Uh, we should talk about equipment vendors. You know, we do have some choice in that. And there's, there's options with that. 
And we're going to need some type of marketing campaign at some time. Whether it's this point. committee, whether it's yeah. Yeah. And come up with a name for the uh, service. Yeah. yeah. I think we should vote on this. I think so. Um, does anyone want to put that in the form of a motion? I make a motion <laughs> that we vote on making a recommendation to the select board regarding the points that we discussed that I second the motion <laughs> <laughs> so so the only one that knows what he wrote I am. He yeah I'm on my own really I'm taking this paper with me but uh, to be clear so it's the bonding await the make ready dollar amount or conduct an updated survey um and uh determine what the administration and MLP structure is going to be going forward. Did I capture yes. the key high yes. points? Is that your motion? I'm is that your second, Mr. Creswell, Mr. Vice yes. Chairman? Okay. Does anyone else have anything to add further discussion that I didn't, that didn't chime in yet that wants to speak before we move to a Everyone vote? Everyone the community is great. And thank you for all your time. It's everyone's really putting the effort in. We're trying to do what's best for the town. Definitely. 100%. Okay, motions made and seconded. We'll do a roll call vote. Doug Moglin, yes. Bob Boyd, yes. Jim Crowley, yes. Chris Boyd, yes. Riley Quinlan, yes. Jim Johnson, yes. Tom Kolick. Yeah, Tom Kolick, yes. Mr. Peace. Ryan Pease, yes. Vice Chairman Creswell. Ian Creswell, yes. That would be darn near unanimous. In fact, it is unanimous. I would also take an even better motion to adjourn. <laughs> so moved. Thank you. She's getting nervous. Okay, all, all in right, favor. I'm, three, yeah, so all I'm right. going to check up the pizza here. Have a good night. Oh, thanks. Thank Bye. Bye. Uh, in